Jonathan Ross has got Shania Twain on tonight, also the man they called Dirty Den. BBC One, 10.35. Right now, some strong language in the news. Good evening and welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Hugh Dennis and once again we're reminded of the strange and troubling times in which we live. Who'd have thought just a month ago that Ian would be leading the series 4-1. In the news this week, at Kensington Town Hall, after a three-year battle over a wrongly issued parking ticket, a local resident gets a written apology from the council. <laughs> Horton Down staff are quick to react when Brian from Infectious Diseases drops a test tube. <laughs> <laughs> and during a test drive for Top Gear in the Forest of Dean, Jeremy Clarkson spots a fox hiding in the undergrowth. <laughs> <laughs> On the Ian Hislop's team is a journalist and former MP who says his whole life changed when, at the age of seven, he was taken to Alice in Wonderland and saw Frankie Howard's caterpillar. That's what explains quite a lot. Giles Brandreth. <laughs> On Paul Merton's team, a star of The Office, who says he's glad the series is coming to an end because the longer a show goes on, the more embarrassing it gets. So please welcome to show six of series 25, <laughs> Martin Freeman. <laughs> And we start with round one. Ian and Giles, here's yours. Giscard this star. The former French president. Just checking the property over. Yes, yes. he likes it. He's going to take it. Oh, Peter Hayne. And that's the Daily Mail. National Referendum Day. Everyone's got het up, or a number of people have got het up, about... Europe and the new... Europe, the, the new whatever it is. What is the new thing? It's the new constitution. As a former Tory MP, you wouldn't have heard of it. But no. it's... Um... <laughs> <laughs> I've been thinking about this Euro business now for about ten years, and they've produced this enormous sort of pile of documentation, and the Daily Mail wants a referendum nationally on the 12th of June, and I've got the solution. What's the solution? We toss for it. <laughs> <laughs> and having, having candidly known a lot of politicians from all parties, they know... A lot of tossers. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Why do you care? Why do I care? I suppose I'd just rather that we elected the people who um, took <coughs> control of our lives. But have you seen... Excuse me, am I needed here? Shall <laughs> 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 we... Do you fancy having a quick treat? <laughs> oh, do you know what the big, uh, the big victory that Peter Hayne claimed this week was? Yeah. You know, in the wording. Do you know yeah. what it was? Yeah, but I'm not going to tell you. He... <laughs> the, okay. the word That's federal... Fair enough. He got rid of the word federal. And replaced it with... with Fish cake. <laughs> you see, nobody yeah. cares. Even you, as you speak well, you the would, words, you... you frankly do not care. Is I... this what democracy is like, Charles? <laughs> <laughs> you shouting at me a lot? <laughs> you actually are really rather attractive. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do you know what the Sun are particularly worried about? That it may be somebody running Europe who doesn't have big tits. <laughs> <laughs> what they're actually worried about is the new Euro arrest warrant. Do you know what that uh, contains, according to the Sun? Foreign courts will be allowed to seize Britons and try them for a list of offences, including xenophobia, which are not crimes here. <laughs> the devious foreign bastards. <laughs> um, <clears throat> uh, Paul and Martin, your question. <clears throat> There's the photo opportunity. Uh, there's Who's that? That's Donald Rumsfeld. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. He's saying, and Who's that's that? Robin Cook. Yeah. And uh, he, what he was saying, and that's uh, Ariel Sharon. <laughs> and oh, you didn't ask me that time. No, no, no uh, I knew that. You knew that, I knew that one. Yeah, I knew that one. I just didn't right. know the first guy was. All right. Hmm. And uh, road map equals road trip. But this is the Middle East, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Yeah. He's off to the Middle East. Uh, Tony Blair, obviously. And why is he off there? Well, he's just say, well done. Well done to the soldiers. You've done a brilliant job. You've been sent here for no good reason at all, and you've lost lives. And well done. <laughs> 
And there were no weapons of mass destruction. They haven't <coughs> been found. They were never here. They've gone. They've disappeared. They've gone. Do you think that Donald Rumsfeld looks like the, uh, the villain in Scooby-Doo? The one who pulls off the mask? Well, the one who, who's, who's running the old fairground? Yeah. Um, do you not think? Yeah, I think he looks exactly like that. What um, do you think, Martin? I'm more intrigued about Cook looking like Stilgo. Yes! We are. We say Robin Cook like, looks like Richard Stilgo. That's, that's our vote. Who does Arafat look like? Um, marrow fat. It's very close to yeah, being a pea. Mm, a big marrow fat pea. Peas in the Middle East is basically what they're after. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what Robin Cook was doing in that uh, package there at the top? You were saying I was right to resign. Yeah. yeah. Thank God he's back in the news because it's given us a chance to play this uh, clip of him on Question Time. He drank the potion that was prepared by the doctor but, but, and paid £45 for it. Robin Cook, uh, Robin Cook, so... <laughs> <laughs> You can't get much more satirical than that, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Do you know what other great strides have been taken towards world peace? <coughs> um, the road map, is that what the, the last mm. bit there, the road map? And Sharon has said for the first time, he, said, he has described a land as being occupied, so there is a possibility that there may be peace in the Middle East after all these years of bloodshed. And who else has been speaking up for Bush this week? Deputy Dog. <laughs> I didn't see that. It was on really early. Yeah. <laughs> Who else was speaking up for Bush? No um, one, surely. Uh, so Bob Geldof. Is oh, it? yes. Ah, yeah, yes. about his attitude to Africa. He's given them some $45 <clears throat> billion dollars or something for AIDS, isn't he? This is uh, this week's news from the Middle East. The Prime Minister's visit took place against the background of increasing unrest in Iraq. Although, as Mr Blair flew out, special measures were taken to curb the wholesale looting of goods from shops. Sure, he didn't go. <laughs> 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 Bob Geldof surprised many this week by praising George Bush's approach to the problems of Africa in contrast to his predecessor, adding, Clinton was a good guy, but he did fuck all. <laughs> <laughs> Which explains why he had so little time for Africa. <laughs> <laughs> Ian and Giles, uh, look at this. You know who the lady is? Who's the man on the right? <laughs> That's the uh, BBC. <clears throat> Everyone is complaining about the BBC. And Blair's sent in the tanks to stop any more Chris. Exactly. <laughs> Do they have a problem about the BBC coverage of the local elections? Yep. That is correct. And how did they uh, lodge their complaint? Do you know? Stiff letter. On a piece of cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> I misread this. It actually says a dossier, but uh, I thought it said a dosser containing instances. <laughs> <laughs> Calling reference to <laughs> Kenneth Clark. <laughs> uh, and do you know what other revelation about the BBC? Shocking revelation. Under new legislation, the police, uh, if there's a terrorist attack, will be able to take over the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. <laughs> I'll have uh, welcome to Crime Watch Update 24. <laughs> uh, and do you know who the Tories are threatening to bring in to produce a report on the BBC if they get into power? Ooh. Uh, it's actually David Elstein, who's uh, former head of Channel 5, wow, the that's... country's fifth most popular broadcaster. <laughs> <laughs> Pity Adam's faith is gone, isn't it? What, what a brilliant last remark that oh, was. Adam faith on his deathbed. <laughs> that was, <laughs> remind us of the last remark. Channel 5, it's all shit, isn't it? <laughs> and then he died. And, mm. <laughs> As he was watching the television, uh, his young mistress was... 23 and charming. <laughs> trouble with famous last words, isn't it? You're on your deathbed and you say something, it's witty and everybody says it's charming or it's deep, it's profound, then you've got to shut up. Because <laughs> you can't then say, could you pass the tissue? <laughs> and then you've got Do you know where Spike Milligan's, what his gravestone says? Uh, I Brilliant. told you I was ill. Yeah. Mm. That's... <laughs> Beneath this sod lies another one. That yeah. was another one he was going to do. <laughs> but that's the reason why yeah. he didn't do it, obviously. <laughs> This is the BBC, who are under attack yet again. As well as the contingency plans for the police to take over the BBC following a terrorist attack, the Sunday Times reported £200 million is to be spent protecting Britain's postcard targets, by which they mean the Tower of London, the Houses of Parliament, and a pair of breasts with a mouse's face drawn on them. <laughs> <coughs> Paul and Martin, your turn again. Oh, this is the plucky Brit. Uh, Penn had a... Mm. <coughs> He's walking alone to the North Pole. And there's, there's Edmund Hillary there. Yeah. Um, that's just been 50 years since mm. he was first conquered uh, Everest. He's worried about it now because he's saying, well, it's too easy. Everest is too easy because everybody's climbing it all the time. So what they should do is they should make it a bit bigger. <laughs> <laughs> Put a bit of scaffolding <laughs> at the top, <laughs> greased with sort of marge or something like that, you know. <laughs> Men with sort of rubber foam hammers coming out and hitting you. Turn it into a version of it's a knockout, 100 yeah, yeah. feet high, just to make it more difficult. <laughs> yeah. 
Do you know who's just climbed Everest? A 15 year old girl. Yeah, a 15 year old girl has done, but someone. Oh, well, someone more interesting than a 15 year old girl? Well, I kind of. Someone, <laughs> very, oh, someone yeah, famous in the 70s. Antonio yeah. Fargas, who played Honey no, no, Bear. It's actually Babs <laughs> from Pan's, Pan's People. People. Oh, Babs really? from Pan's People. Oh. Really? Yeah, how would she have climbed it, I wonder? Doing that. <laughs> <laughs> what music did she climb it to? <laughs> Ain't no mountain high enough, possibly. No. <laughs> yes. Do you know what Penn Haddo um, did? He got a bit of flack for... Yes, um, because yeah. uh, the guy yeah. that picked him up in the aeroplane said, um, this is far too late, you shouldn't, be, you shouldn't be going to the North Pole, South Pole, whatever it was mm. at this time of year, because the ice is melting, it's very difficult for the plane to land, mm. and that'll be £100,000. Yeah. And also, exactly there's a giveaway there, because he was actually <clears throat> having to swim. Yes. Usually yeah. you walk to the pole. Yeah. Perhaps yeah. you should be the first person to swim up Everest. <laughs> You've got to go against the yeah. tide, obviously. <laughs> This is the rescue from the North Pole, the British explorer Penn Haddo. It's also the 50th anniversary of the first ascent of Everest. A number of serious mountaineers have complained that Everest is getting overcrowded with tourists and pleasure seekers. Nowadays, it's too easy to climb up here to the summit, said Linda Barker to Rachel from S Club. <laughs> <laughs> this week also saw the youngest person ever to climb Everest when a 15-year-old girl That's reached the, one you're the summit. It is, yeah, yeah. 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 And mine you know, wasn't as interesting as... I do, actually. Mm. Yeah. I went to yeah. Salesians with her in Shirtsy. Yeah, there we are. Yeah. He knows her. Mm. Excellent. It wasn't a planned expedition. <laughs> I don't think he believes it. No, no I, I don't think he liked it or did believed you go, it. No. Did you really know her? Yeah, I did. I what did was her name? Emily. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. uh, she wasn't on a planned expedition. She was just trying to get a better signal on her mobile. <laughs> <laughs> So at the end of that round, a quick look at the score shows us that Ian and Giles have four and Paul and Martin have four. <laughs> Time now for the tabloid headline round. Ian and Giles, what's this about? Pointless rubbish. It's to do with the Eurovision Song Contest, isn't it? Nul point. Four. And the song by Gemini was considered to be rubbish. Anyway, it certainly came bottom of the poll. Yes. No points at all for the first time ever. I thought that Turkey would do quite well because of the belly dancing, but of course I was really backing Tattoo. Were you really? I Why? Was, they were useless. Tattoo were not useless. They were rubbish. <laughs> tattoo <laughs> are personal friends of mine. Sorry. <laughs> John Major's a personal yeah, yeah. friend of yours. John Major <laughs> is a very good man. He's a he would actually quite like to do this, and he would come wearing a tie. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. So we've read. Can I say, yeah. John Major? He dresses so well, and so quickly. Can I just pick you up on the... <laughs> <laughs> a, a tattoo really personal friends of yours? Well, I have met them, and I actually know tat better than two, but I have... <laughs> <laughs> I, I that, that's them. certainly true. <laughs> <laughs> Who would like to see the Eurovision entry again? Well, I didn't see it at all, so, well, I, we I, see it? so we I don't see it? know if it's as bad as people say. Well, watch this. OK. <laughs> Not to worry, eh? it's only in front of 150 million people. <laughs> Do you know why they're called Gemini? Yes. yes. We were in tune. We yeah. were in tune. Perfect. Maybe why? we should do it next year. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to answer the question or should we just post it on CFAX? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is the story of Europe coming together and uniting under one common sentiment. Weren't Gemini rubbish? <laughs> After scoring no points in last weekend's Eurovision Song Contest, Gemini claims the stage equipment let us down. Yep, the microphones were working. <laughs> the female half of Gemini, Gemma Abbey, told one newspaper, I'd like to get my career sorted out before I get married. So a June wedding, is it? <laughs> Paula Martin, your spinning headline, Anarachophobia. <clears throat> the train spotters are no longer going to be allowed to be train spotters. They're not allowed to be, they're, they're going to be stopped standing on platforms writing down the numbers of trains because it's a security problem. Because their notebooks could be made out of dynamite, their pens mm. could be guided missiles, they, they could be suicide note takers. <laughs> In fact, I'm, I, I spot train spotters. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I go along to Clapham Junction and I saw there's one on platform four. How many of the uh, 100,000 have you got now? Um, well, I'm, I, there's, a, there's a bloke in Leicester I still haven't got. Uh, Ian, Ian Chewitt. <laughs> Do you record what they're wearing as well? What they're wearing, what they've had for breakfast, how tall they are. Their Make of Anorak. Make of Anorak, you know, fleece lined, hood up, hood down, <laughs> summer winds, all weathers. I've got them all in my book. You can send a little message to Ian Chewitt now. OK. Hello, Ian. <laughs> You can let teddy bears, don't you? That's not a million miles from train spotting, is it? <laughs> do you write down the numbers of the teddy bears? Do what you? sort of person do you think I am? Of course I don't. <laughs> <laughs> is there anybody here who's a train spotter who's willing to admit it? Well, I'm a commuter and every morning I desperately try and spot <laughs> any train. <laughs> This is the growing threat to the nation's train spotters who are being banned from some railway stations because they're now regarded as a potential security risk. <laughs> According to the Daily Telegraph, the ban has come about because of the rail company's obsession with health and safety. Well, there's a first time for everything. <laughs> According to the Telegraph, train spotters are being urged to register their names before visiting stations. So far, 700 have registered, all under the name Norman No Mates. <laughs> Round three is all about spotting the odd one out. Ian and Giles, your four are Alan Harrison, oh. Geoffrey Archer, oh. St Peter and Mr Toad. Now, Geoffrey Archer appears to have become a bishop here. Well, nothing's impossible. Yeah. <laughs> your father's a bishop, isn't he, Hugh? Uh, he was a bishop. He's retired. You still call him bishop, do you? I certainly call you him a bishop, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> this bishop needs a church of it. Would it be a church we've heard of? Where was he bishop of? Yeah. Salisbury. No, he was in uh, Eds and Ips. Really? <laughs> really? It's an Edmondsbury and Ipswich. Gosh, senior yeah. bishop. Oh. Then. To be a senior yeah. bishop, you have to, write lots, of, uh, you have to write lots of theological books. Mm. To be a really senior bishop, my father wrote only one book called Cycle Rides Around Suffolk. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what the connection is between these? Yes, yes it's prison. It's got to be prison. Yeah, uh, it is prison. <coughs> Mr. Toad um, went to prison and then escaped. Dressed as a washerwoman. Dressed he as did? a washerwoman. So I think St. Peter went to prison and then miraculously escaped. Do you know who Alan Harrison is? No, well, he's got a big he's hat a, on. He's a shadowy figure, isn't he? <laughs> he's a one-legged man. Did he escape from prison on one leg? Yep. Yes. Right. They all escaped from prison except for Geoffrey. Except Geoffrey Archer, who hasn't. Ta-ra! That is... Uh, <laughs> that's it. Exactly the right answer. Uh, Mr. <laughs> Toad uh, escaped. Do you know why he was put away in the first place? Mr. Yeah, Toad? reckless Speeding. driving. Reckless driving. Boop, boop. Speeding. <laughs> Isn't that the cry he cried? It was very, very good. Yeah. <laughs> Every Archer is due to be released any minute <clears> now, <throat> isn't he? I think he can soon, yes, on, soon. on parole. Yeah. Will you be having him here? I think he'll be in the chair. I think he'll be rather good. Yeah, we, then, we could, mm. then we could wire it Bit up. Bit of a problem, no. Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And I've known Mary, too, for very many years. My, my wife was at St Anne's College, Oxford, which was the college that Mary was at, and there was a corridor, and there were four rooms, and the first room was my wife, and then there was Mary Archer, and then there was Edwina Curry, and then there was Anne Widdicombe. I think I did the right thing to stop at the first room. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? It is true. Genuinely, it's, it's true. true. It's true. It's true. That it's true. is extraordinary. Yeah, it is. It is it's that is the uh, correct answer. They've all escaped from prison, with the exception of Geoffrey Archer. A one-legged prisoner escaped from hospital. As part of his punishment, Alan Harrison will now no longer be able to work on the prison farm. So they'll have to find another dibber. <laughs> <coughs> Paula Martin, your four are Russell Crowe, Michael Douglas, Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones, and the British Armed Forces. The first thing you think of with uh, Michael Douglas and Catherine Zeta-Jones is the uh, public wedding photograph fiasco that they had with OK and Hello magazine. Did anything to do with sort of images that shouldn't be seen? Mm, without permission or something? Yeah. Uh, not really, no. Okay. Uh, Russell Crowe... Um... <laughs> <coughs> what about the, the time where he was asked for his autograph while he was, well, weeing, essentially? Yeah. And he said, look, can I wash my hands <coughs> first? He was having a wee and he said, can I have your autograph? He said, yeah, there, there we are. <laughs> I'll underline it if you want. Um. It's about a rather extravagant method of sending messages to people, really. Oh, taking advertisements in newspapers. Do you know who they were to? Uh, were they all to, to try and get Oscars? No, the British right. Armed Forces put an advert in the paper. Dear Saddam Hussein, we cannot find <laughs> your weapons of mass destruction. <laughs> 
were they messages of love to the, loved ones? Kind of. Messages of love and congratulation, really. The yeah. British so, Armed Forces. Uh, so the British Armed Forces. <coughs> is correct, yes. Uh, uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones yes, yes. and Michael Douglas, who was there? Who to each other? To themselves? No, they sent uh, a to message Kirk. to <coughs> Celine Dion, telling her how much they were looking forward to seeing her show in Las Vegas the next day. <laughs> Significantly, there wasn't one the day after, saying how much they'd enjoyed it. <coughs> <laughs> Yep, the odd one out is the British Armed Forces. All the others have taken out full-page adverts, whereas the British Armed Forces were the object of one taken out by the Bush Entertainment Corporation of America, offering free admission to their theme parks. <laughs> uh, the advert said, the offer is valid from the 23rd of May to the 11th of November, 2003. So now we know the invasion of Syria begins on November the 12th. <laughs> <coughs> Michael Douglas and his wife took out a full-page advert complimenting Celine Dion. According to one newspaper, in 1995, the legendary producer Phil Spector agreed to come out of retirement and work with Celine. The session ended unhappily when Phil failed to get drunk and shoot her. <laughs> <laughs> so, with just one round to go, Paul and Martin have seven, Ian and Giles have nine. Missing Words is the final round featuring this week's guest publication, European Sandwich and Snack News, <laughs> formerly known as Sandwich and Snack News, another example of creeping centralisation. <laughs> Here we go. Dolphins are paying for what? Tuna or... baguettes. <laughs> Other people's bad driving. Their insurance premiums gone through the roof. And they're fed up of it. Other people, you know, 17 year olds, they get out of a car in Newcastle, <laughs> driving around, smashing the dolphins, are picking up the tab. Oh, <laughs> elocution lessons. <laughs> they're fed up with clicking all the yeah. time. Yeah, Prostitutes and scuba diving gear. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is, in fact, your sea bass dinner. According right. to The oh. Independent, every day one dolphin is killed in the nets. Well, if they will bat without helmets. <laughs> Next, Earl of Sandwich moves into what? Sandwiches. I happen to know him, and I happen to know he has gone into Why sandwiches. Why doesn't that surprise me? <laughs> <laughs> it is sandwiches. It is. It's in, he, is, he has started a sandwich business. He's called Oliver, and it's a very good sandwich business. And you can actually call him on 07-021-4562. Really good baguettes. And if you'd like to offer Giles a choice of fillings, <laughs> the answer is the Earl of Sandwich moves into delivery. A new sandwich delivery company called Earl of Sandwich has been set up by Robert Earl, founder of Planet Hollywood, together with John, the 11th Earl of Sandwich. It means bad news for their main rivals, Steve Pye and Derek Chips. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Earl of Sandwich's surname? Is it Sandwich? Mm -hmm. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Right, here's the thing. What came first, right? The His Earl. name. The name yeah. came first. The Earl yeah. Sandwich invented the sandwich. He was sitting around when he was doing the game, and he, he wanted something sort of quickly that he could eat, and so mm. he, there was some meat somewhere. He said, put it between two pieces of bread, mm. and so he started eating that. Mm. And he said, that's a very good idea. What mm. do you call it? And he said, well, I'm going to name it after myself. From mm. now on, it's going to be known as a Colin. <laughs> <laughs> and then, after several hundred years, it became a sandwich. But no, it was this Earl of Sandwich that supposedly invented a sandwich. Cool. And he was playing that night with the Duke of Wellington. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who kicked him. Yeah. <laughs> Thus giving rise to another... <laughs> Eponymous <laughs> artifact, yeah. the, beef the boot. <laughs> beef shoes. Beef, beef shoes. shoes. <laughs> do, you remember when you, do you remember when you used to wear beef shoes during the war? And, and the you, third guy. When you couldn't get leather, beef shoes. Beef sho the third guy was the Earl of Cardigan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was one hell of a four. It really was. Not bad. Lord Traffic Cone was there, do you remember? Yeah. <laughs> and the he, first. The he first... invented a telephone box. <laughs> <laughs> the first Baron Trouser Press. <laughs> <Yeah>. Of Corby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hang on, is this all bullshit now? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll find... <clears throat> now, to be fair, I asked a serious question and now it seems it's almost no, like no. you're lying. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. excessive no. lying was invented by the Earl of Bullshit in 1678. <laughs> <laughs> he was called Lord Blair. <laughs> <laughs> Next, my best mate's what? Something major. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, he was a perfect gentleman. Edwina told me that when they were sharing a bath, John Major always sat with his back to the taps. <laughs> if, it, if it had been me, I'd have sat with me back to her. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is my best mate's a python. 
Oh. Uh, this is the story of a three-year-old Cambodian boy who's inseparable from his pet python. <laughs> uh, the snake is called Lucky, and the boy is called Lucky at time of going to press. <laughs> Next, the French pay homage to what? Ian Hislop. <laughs> <laughs> they love him. They do. They're going to open a theme do, park yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Have you heard it's... about it, Ian? No, I've missed it yeah, so yeah, it's far. it's a theme park based on Ian. Oh, mm. lovely. Yeah, it's really it good. is actually an individual. It's the French pay homage to Beckham. Uh, uh, this is the news that in France, at least, David Beckham has transformed the image of the British male. And by the way, if you're watching, David, uh, homage is the French for cheese. <laughs> <laughs> the French paper Le Monde describes Beckham as a charming cockney blonde. Uh, pardon, monsieur, je pense que vous l'avez confusé avec Barbara Windsor. <laughs> 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 Next, what is a well-kept sandwich secret? Wallpaper paste. <laughs> cheese and iron filings. It goes with simply cheese. 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 Name of a cheese. Uh, oh, I don't know. Cheddar cheese. Cheddar cheese. <laughs> so cheddar was named after an area. It was. A gorge. A gorge. Yeah, it was. I'm g I've got all sorts going on now. Mm. <laughs> That's licorice, you're thinking. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's the Earl of Licorice. Yeah. yeah. 1722. Mm. To. 1428. Thanks. He was a time traveller. <laughs> <laughs> Next, angry gardeners say what to what? Bollocks to Titchmarsh. Is the correct answer? No, it isn't. <laughs> the answer actually is rats to cats. Apparently, oh. Britain's gardeners think rats and cats are the least favourite animals to have in your garden. Meanwhile, the same survey shows the most popular animal amongst gardeners is the hedgehog, especially when you've got muddy boots. <laughs> you... They're saying that cats and rats are the, are the least popular animals in the garden. What about a hippopotamus? <laughs> yeah. Surely got to come above a cat. You find a hippopotamus sitting in your bird bath in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that brings us to the end of tonight's contest, and the final scores are Paul and Martin, 9, and Ian and Giles, 10. <laughs> Before we go, there's just time for a quick caption competition. <laughs> Is it government deny problems with GM Buttercup? <laughs> <laughs> person on the right and the person on the left. When you said you invented a ray that would make me two inches tall, I said, no, it's never going to happen. And there we are. I'll take it all back. Are these leprechauns? <laughs> Has there ever been a photograph of a leprechaun before? <laughs> have you met any leprechauns of note? Probably have, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> Funnily enough, I've been going through yeah. a slightly strange phase recently. <laughs> we know, we're oh, witnessing it. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Giles Brandreth, Paul Merton and Martin Freeman. And I'll leave you with news that at the French Embassy in Washington, the Americans pass on a special message to Jacques Chirac. <laughs> <laughs> In Westminster, there's evidence that some contestants may have been cheating during the MP's charity quiz night. <laughs> <laughs> and as Highgrove, Prince Charles helps out Camilla Parker Bowles with last minute adjustments to her makeup. <laughs> Good night. BBC Two's got comedy now, Thin Blue Line, just about to start. And here on BBC One later, Dirty Den and Shania Twain. They're on with Jonathan Ross at 10.35. You can get a whole load of the best bits from 13 years of Have I Got News For You on this video and DVD.